Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. Obviously, yesterday, very big day. We all fill out our first brackets. I do have my main bracket as I've labeled it. This is the bracket that I will be going by and judging myself on. I was able to actually look back last year at my main bracket. It was the 87th percentile and the analytics bracket I think was the 92nd percentile. So I'm going to be giving you guys kind of an analytics look. Who should we actually be picking when it comes to the analytics? You can see the most picked champion. It is UConn. I think that's great news for those of us that are taking Houston, we don't think UConn will repeat because it is so hard, but when it comes to the analytics bracket, what do I think? And I will be looking at a lot of this different stuff. I'm going to be talking about it when it comes to filling out an analytics-based bracket. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing when it comes to the analytics, all the one seeds are going to be winning, guys. That's obvious. I understand uh, what happened last year, you know, what happened back in like 2018 with Virginia losing, but you know, that's only happened, what, twice now? So, obviously, you're going to want, at least Law of Averages says that all the one seeds will be winning in terms of that. When it comes to the 8v9 games, they really don't matter uh, in the grand scheme of things unless you get a rogue, like, 8 seed going all the way to the Elite 8 or Final Four. And you can say, well, it happened last year. Well, you have to understand that FAU made the Final Four in part because they didn't face a one seed in the second round. That's why these 8v9 games normally are very irrelevant because the team, they'll immediately face a one seed and they'll lose. So, and I would expect, obviously, all the one seeds to win. So when it comes to these 8v9 games, analytically, they're all very even. You could go with either or. I think FAU probably grades out as a little bit more explosive than Northwestern, although no, they're 8v9 games. It's basically 50-50. Nebraska and AM, I am going to take AM there, uh, just if I'm looking at the analytics. Mississippi State, Michigan State, you're going to take Michigan State, even though they have a worse record, and then Utah State and TCU. I believe I'll take Utah State there. Those are all like 50-50 games, but I do like the way I'm filling out this bracket to where I'm comparing all like the 8 and 9 games, the 5-12 games. That's how I'm going to fill this out because it is kind of a different analytical look at how to do this. Again, when you look at 8v9 games, they're really not that important. I don't see, you can't predict this stuff. Who knows? Maybe a team goes on a run, but I can't see any of these 8 or 9 seeds beating a 1. So as long, but then again, do we really expect all four one seeds to make the Sweet 16? I mean, probably, but you can never be too sure. Moving on to the 5v12 games. So when it comes to the 5v12 games, there, there should be at minimum one upset. Minimum one, maybe two. That's what I would say. Normally, people do kind of overdo it with the 5v12 games. I had two 12 over fives in my bracket uh, that I did yesterday. When it comes to this, Certainly, if you take a look at an analytical look at this, you know, UAB just is not up to standard. They had that run way at the end, but they're like outside of the top 100. And I understand people would say, well, they've got momentum. I get it, but I just, I, I just can't pick UAB right now. And the analytics would say, certainly not. Wisconsin, James, Madison. Uh, I, I think what I'm going to do with this bracket is I'm going to pick one 12 over five. That's it. Was James, James Madison... Well, let's see the other ones. Gonzaga, McNeese. Yeah, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have St. Mary's advancing. The analytics love St. Mary's. They're a top 20 team. I'm going to have McNeese beat. Well, that doesn't really make sense. The analytics do like Gonzaga. All right, we'll have Gonzaga winning, and then this will be our upset. All right, that's fine. Yes, the upset will be James Madison over Wisconsin. So there's only one upset in the 12-5 game, being a little bit more conservative about it. But you can understand that you know, Wisconsin as a five, maybe a little bit more of a weaker five. I know people say, well, they played well in the Big Ten Championship. Yeah, but guys, let's not forget the overall body of work in the second half of the year, and that really crushed them in terms of the analytical rankings, and that would be a potential 12 over five type upset. All these other ones, I just don't think UAB is good enough. It wouldn't shock me if they won. I mean, these are 12-5 games. It is what it is. I do think St. Mary's is going to beat Grand Canyon. I, I feel very confident about that. St. Mary's is just a solid team. Now, Grand Canyon, certainly they're like 30-4. and four. I get it. They're kind of in the same boat as James uh, Madison. And then Gonzaga McNeese. Personally, I think McNeese is probably going to win that game. But you can, you can understand Gonzaga. They've kind of had an under-the-radar year. But when it comes to the 12-5 games... 
probably one upset. If you're feeling zesty, you can go two or three upsets. I mean, three is very likely not going to happen, but it's just a bracket. It is what it is. This is just kind of a realistic analytical view of it. Uh, the 4v13 game, excuse me, Auburn, Yale. So a lot of us were very shocked that Auburn was put in the same uh, you know, region as UConn. Auburn analytically is like a top six team. So obviously we're going to have Auburn beating Yale. Yale, by the way, and not that this matters too much, but they barely beat Brown. Now Brown is sitting at 13 and 18. That was the conference championship game to get Yale into the tournament. It was Brown versus Yale and Brown should have won that game. They were up by like five points with a minute left. Again, Brown is 13 and 18. That's not a knock on the Bulldogs, but I'm just saying it's not a great performance by Yale. Duke versus Vermont. What do I do with this game? Analytically, w analytics would suggest that Vermont is a, a high upside potential upset type team. But do I really pick a 13 over a 4 for an analytics bracket? Let's see the other 4v13 matchups. Kansas, Sanford. I think I have to go Kansas. I think I have to go Kansas, and then I have to go Alabama. So yes, I will go ahead and give Vermont the upset over... Well, it just doesn't make sense. Unfortunately, unfortunately I'm going to have to go Duke there. The problem is Duke is like a top 10 team. They grad out really well. So yeah, I do have to have Duke advancing there. I'm trying to throw some upsets into it because realistically there will be upsets, but it's just hard to see an upset there. I guess the one 13 over 4 I could see... Everyone says Alabama possibly losing because they have a bad defense. They just have such a good offense, man. It's so hard to see them losing that game. And then Samford, Kansas. All right, you know what? We'll go Samford. Because of the injuries to Kansas, I don't love it. But you can kind of understand it there. You kind of have to make it. I mean, uh, all right, we'll just we'll just leave it like that. We'll go Samford. We'll, we'll give you one upset there. Uh, next, you do have your 6v11 games. It is BYU versus Duquesne. I mean, obviously, we're going to have BYU advancing. Duquesne, who knows, man? It's March Madness. It's crazy. Not something you want to pick if you are looking at the analytics. The next 6v11 game, it is Texas Tech versus NC State. Certainly, Texas Tech, really solid team. Very deep team. Very deep team. Have them advancing as the sixth seed. South Carolina versus Oregon. So this is probably, well, you know what? I am going to have South Carolina advance it. Yes, 6 over 11. Now, I do like Oregon personally. Actually, you know what? I think S South Carolina has been a fraudulent team in terms of the analytics. I am going to take Oregon there. And then Clemson, New Mexico. I'm going New Mexico. Clemson is another very fraudulent team analytically. New Me That's a 6 v 11 game. I think it's a 50-50 toss-up. New Mexico got an amazing draw to the Sweet 16. If you're looking for a Cinderella-type team, the way they played in the Mountain West tournament and now getting Clemson, oh, it's an amazing, amazing pull for them. So you do have two decent upsets there. That would not surprise me at all. New Mexico over Clemson, Oregon over South Carolina. Analytically, both South Carolina and Clemson are not liked, which is pretty funny. Clemson, South Carolina. Uh, but moving on to the 3v14 games, Illinois, Moorhead State. Certainly, guys, Illinois, very solid team. I would be shocked with that offensive firepower if they lost to a team like Moorhead in the first round in a 3v14 type matchup. Kentucky versus Oakland. You know, a 3v14 upset, is it possible? I don't think so with a team like Kentucky. The offensive firepower is too high. It's very similar to Alabama, where people look at these teams and they say, oh, they're terrible on defense. I get it, and it's going to be an issue later in the tournament, not right now. I think Kentucky beats Oakland, higher scoring game for sure. That's a 3v14. Creighton versus Akron, Baylor versus Colgate. Do we pick a 14 over a 3? I don't think we can. Analytically, it doesn't make sense. So we're going to have Creighton advancing, even though I don't like Creighton personally. And we are going to have Baylor beating Colgate. Colgate out of the Patriot. They always seem to make the tournament. Moving on to the 7v10 game, Washington State versus Drake. And this is one where you can have Drake advancing. Those teams match up. They're similar. Actually, I do think Washington State is better in terms of analytics. Where's Washington State? Washington State's sitting right here. Where's Dr Yeah. Well, I mean that's that's a that's a it's a close game. I will give the win to Washington State. Can we not do that maybe? Get that off of there. And then Florida against Boise State or Colorado. Yeah. So this is where it gets annoying. Oh, so, 
Florida is a perfect example of a team that you really can't predict. They play down to their competition, but they also play up to their competition. I think the most easy thing to do would be to have Florida advance, and then that's a green light to really make Florida go on a run because of the two seed that's in their region, Marquette. I'm not a big fan of them. The analytics do kind of like Marquette, but they also suggest that Florida can very easily beat a team like Marquette because Florida plays up to their competition. So we will have Florida advancing. There's got to be some 10 over 7 in any bracket. So I am going to have Nevada beating Dayton. I feel like that's not that it's an obvious pick. Dayton could certainly win. They're the 7th seed. But just the way Dayton's played in the second half of the season, they have gone down significantly. And then Kansas taking on Virginia or Colorado State, or excuse me, Texas taking on Virginia or Colorado State. Texas will be advancing there. And I do want to make a comment on Texas in the next round about my main bracket and really this region in general, because this was the region that I kind of just backed myself into taking Tennessee when I could actually see Texas make the final. I, I, there's a path for Texas, I feel like, to make the final four. You've got Tennessee as a two seed. They're very top heavy. They always choke in March. You've got Creighton, a team I'm not wowed by, and you've got Purdue. We know what they do in March normally. Uh, moving on to the 2v15 games. Listen, could there be a 15 over a 2? Yes. Does it make sense to predict it if you're going try hard and, and not having fun with it? It doesn't make a lot of sense, guys. It really doesn't. So we're actually going to have every 2 seed win. Analytically, the, the model would suggest this is the best thing to do. Uh, me personally, I had to throw a 15 over a 2 in, so I did go Western Kentucky over Marquette. I originally wanted to pick against Iowa State, but with their performance in their conference championship game, you have to give respect to Iowa State. So in terms of an analytical style bracket, you do have, you've got a one typical upset with a 12 seed advancing. A lot of these are chalk though. That's just the reality. There's another, you know, a 13 and 11, an 11, some of it's chalk. You're trying to mix it together and be realistic with these type of picks, but make sure you have all the higher seeds advancing because that is what most likely will happen. Even if you want to outsmart it and say a nine seed's going to go to the final four, that most likely will not happen. And then the odds of you picking the correct nine seed is extremely, extremely unlikely. So I'm going to have just straight up all the one seeds win again. I know you think, oh, it's boring. There could be an upset. I understand. But analytically, this is, this is they would suggest you to do this. North Carolina advancing, Purdue advancing. All the one seeds make the Sweet 16. Could any of the one seeds lose? I don't see UConn losing in the, in the round of 32. I don't see Houston losing in the round of 32. I don't see Purdue losing. I think they got an amazing draw with Utah State or TCU. Uh, you know, the size advantage there. And then this could be a very annoying game. This is the one thing to where, yeah, you could possibly see Michigan State with their offensive potential or just their potential overall beating North Carolina, but they're very inconsistent. And that would not be something to predict if you are looking at kind of an analytical view of this. Uh, next, you do have San Diego State taken on Auburn. When it comes to this, obviously Auburn, they're loved. There's no doubt about it. Just to show you guys, where is Auburn at? There's Auburn. So look at this. In terms of the overall rankings, and, and I'm going to show what this, this means. It's tournament performance of teams, similar profiles. So basically what this means is, do you have a chance to win the national ch title? Do you have a chance to make the Final Four? Based off of recent years, how do these teams profile against teams previously in the tournament? So for example, you can take a look at UConn. When you when you look at their team and their analytics, based off of the, what is this, the past 10 years, uh, you know, they've had, the, the teams that profile similarly to UConn have made six Final Fours. So in essence, that would say, yeah, UConn is very likely going to make the Final Four. It's very hard to make the Final Four. Maybe they'll lose, but I'm just saying more more, more likely than not, UConn, because they profile really well, will make the Final Four. North Carolina has four teams similar. They profile really well. Houston profiles very well. Arizona profiles pretty well. Iowa State, two teams similar. Uh, Tennessee, three teams similar. So, you know, when it comes to final four picks, you're going to want to look at UConn, North Carolina, Arizona, Houston, Tennessee, teams like that. And then when it comes to national champion, UConn, three teams similar, 
and, and it's really just UConn, honestly, in terms of the analytics. But that's just this is a good barometer to look at when it comes to actually picking your final four. Look at these teams' profiles. UConn profiles similar to six other final four teams recently. North Carolina's at four, Arizona's at three, Houston's at four. Maybe that should be the final four right there. Although, I don't know, I think one of those teams might be in the same region. But I'm just saying, you look at analytics like that, that'll really help you in terms of picking a Final Four. That's most likely going to happen. But just to talk about Auburn, I mean, Auburn is just loved in terms of analytics. Where is all? Look at that. Auburn's the number four team, according to Ken Palm, in the entire country. And they got seeded with UConn. That is crazy to me. Because they do supposedly look at analytics when they do this. So it's just crazy that that happened. Um, James Madison versus Duke. I'm going to go, well, no, you have to go Duke because analytics do like Duke as like a top 10 team. So I am going to go Duke there. Uh, I, I don't know. How should I fill these out? I'm just going to fill out fill it out like this, I think. Yeah. Uh, BYU versus Illinois. Illinois, they are liked. Well, actually, BYU is also liked analytically. Illinois, let's see where they're at in terms of the end. Like, Illinois is 10th. BYU is 16th. Illinois is right here, BYU. Yeah, I, I would say more likely than not, Illinois should beat BYU. And then Washington State versus Iowa State. We are going to have Iowa State advancing. It just makes more sense. Iowa State, the amazing defense. They are just a better overall team than Washington State in terms of that. Moving on to this right side, it is Texas Tech versus Kentucky. Kentucky, I would say, would be a safer pick to advance. Even with the bad defense, they've got significantly better offensive firepower than Texas Tech. I'm not breaking any news. They are a three seed versus six seed. We will take them. And then Florida versus Marquette. Analytics would suggest not all the two seeds are going to make the Sweet 16. So I think this is a great position to pick Florida uh, as a seven seed, as a little bit of a Cinderella to make the Sweet 16 there, beating Marquette. Uh, not really high on Marquette. Analytically, they grade out decently, but I think them getting seated in the same area as Florida was really unfortunate. Who knows? Maybe Boise State or you know Colorado. I'm, I'm guessing Colorado is going to face Florida in that that game because I think Colorado is going to beat Boise. But who knows? Maybe one of those teams can beat Florida. It could certainly happen. They're very streaky. Uh, but just based off of that, we will have them advancing. Moving on to next, you do have St. Mary's versus Bama. So the analytics do like Bama. It's just because of their offense. I understand people would say, well, St. Mary's has a way better defense. Bama, they're inconsistent. I actually had St. Mary's beating Bama in my personal bracket, but it's understandable that, you know, Bama would beat St. Mary's due to the better offense. Uh, New Mexico versus Baylor. I, I mean, you got to go Baylor here. Personally, I went with New Mexico, but yes, analytically, Baylor, the three seed, should win there. And then Arizona would beat Nevada for sure. Yes, this is very chalky, but I'm just saying this is, you know, likely going to be a good bracket, probably perform better than mine just because it's a lot safer and these seeds are, the teams are seeded higher for a reason. Gonzaga, Sanford, Gonzaga wins that game. Oregon versus Creighton. I do think if you want to make it realistic, you have to choose another lower seed to advance. So we will be going with Oregon there. And then Texas and Tennessee. I just feel like Texas is going to win this game. But this is an analytical bracket. And personally, it might be a big regret for me not to pick Texas over Tennessee. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But you can see the teams in the Sweet 16. I do have an 11 seed. You've got your 2 seed. You've got your 3v2, 1v4, 1v5. 2v7, 2v3, 1v4, 1v4. So I do like the way this is scaled. Um, you could say it's definitely chalky, but it is an analytical bracket, and at least there are a few upsets in it. 1v4 games, UConn versus Auburn. Obviously very tough for Auburn being in this position. I am going to go with UConn. Houston versus Duke. I am going to go with Houston, just because they're going to be the favorites in that game for sure. Illinois versus Iowa State. <laughs> you know, this is where you kind of have to start thinking analytically, probably Iowa State, but it's really close. Would you consider going Illinois, the three over the two to balance the bracket better? And then Kentucky, Florida, I am going to go Florida there. I will go Iowa State. So I'll go UConn, Iowa State, Houston, Florida for the analytical bracket. You do have a seven seed. You do have a 1v2. You want to try and balance it properly. North Carolina, Alabama, you've got it. Well, 
Listen, there are some analytics that suggest Alabama... Oh no, Alabama moved down a little bit. I mean, but look at this. North Carolina is low for a one seed analytically. So maybe I should take Bama over them. Maybe I should take it. We'll take Bama over them for now. Baylor, Arizona. You got to go Arizona. Oregon versus Tennessee. You got to go Tennessee there. Purdue versus Gonzaga. You do have to go with Purdue. And yeah, this is decently scaled. 2v4, 1v2, 1v7, 1v2. Okay. And then for this, uh, obviously UConn. Like if you're picking a Final Four, now we're picking the Final Four. So UConn, I would say... You know, they're, they're a team that everyone is picking not only to make the Final Four, but, I mean, 26% of the brackets picking them to win the national title. Houston versus Florida. We are going to go with Houston there to advance as well. So there are two one seeds. When it comes to the amount of one seeds you want in your Final Four, <laughs> you know, honestly, you're going to want all four one seeds. I'm not saying to do that. <laughs> it is very boring, but I'm just saying... There's a reason these teams are one seeds because they have the highest chance to make the final four. They're the best team in each region. That is not how my bracket is. I have two one seeds and two two seeds. And certainly we could see a seven seed. We could see an eight seed make it just because it is March Madness. But if you're talking about the law of predictions and probabilities, it is better to pick all one seeds to make the final four because the idea is you want as many final four teams as possible to get the multiplier uh, now, when it comes to like a bracket like this, I will be having Arizona beat Alabama and then Purdue, Tennessee. I am going to be taking Purdue in terms of the analytics bracket. So you can see you do have Houston, you do have Purdue. Purdue is liked on a lot of different sites as like the second best team in college basketball. I do think they're probably going to be losing in the Elite Eight or the Sweet 16, but this is the analytics bracket. So three one seeds and a two seed. It is very chalky. I do think, you know, in terms of this, this is a toss-up. I'm going to take Purdue making the nation. Well, now Houston in terms of analytics is better. And then UConn. And then I will have in terms of this bracket, UConn winning. This is the analytics bracket. UConn is just, they grade out amazing. You could argue that maybe Houston. And personally, I do think Houston will win the national title this year. But there's no denying that UConn is the favorite right now. And that is just kind of a look at the analytics bracket. So you could certainly have more upsets than this. But in terms of actually getting it right, I mean, honestly, probably having North Carolina make the Final Four would be better, but it is just a fun exercise. We'll see where this bracket ends up finishing out, and it is very chalky. There's a lot of one seeds that go deep. There's very little upsets. You do have maybe one or two slight Cinderella teams like Florida, like Oregon, I think New Mexico. I think if you're talking about Cinderella teams, Florida's a great pick. Oregon's a great pick. You know, if you have the balls to pick Texas to beat Tennessee, I think Texas has a high upside. New Mexico, based on where they're at, could go on a nice run. And then from this, yeah, this this is going to be a very chalk region just because they loaded the East with good teams. And I don't think there's going to be any Cinderella's from the East, personally. It's just a stacked region. But either way, that is just a look at kind of the you know, analytics bracket, what could happen, most likely to happen. It is a lot of one seeds. And if you're going try hard, uh, if I were to go real try hard, I would just pick all four one seeds to make the final four again, just because of the multiplier you get for teams making the final four. And you're guaranteed very likely at, at least one, probably guaranteed two final four teams, just because normally two final, final four teams are one seeds. Uh, it, it's normally not more than that. But again, if the goal is to get as many teams into the Final Four as possible, because that's how you get a ton of points, that would be the most likely realistic thing to do. But I did decide to go with Arizona just to try and make it a little bit more realistic in terms of this analytics-based bracket. Now guys, when it comes to my personal uh, challenge or whatever, my personal bracket, let me just submit this, get this out of the way. This is my group personally... You can see we're up to 410 members. I have my main bracket submitted into it. And I will put the link to this group in the description. I will be live tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern grading people's brackets. If you want me to grade your bracket, go ahead and submit it to my group. And I will take a look at it tonight. So I will be live to do that. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.